Hi everyone, welcome to part two of this new Excel series that we're doing on Excel functions that everyone needs up their sleeve. And if you haven't watched part one to this series, please make sure you go and watch that video on our YouTube channel. The link to that video is in the description down below and you do not want to miss any videos on this series because this is great Excel functions that you can use in your day to day. So the first function that we are going to discuss is the convert function in Microsoft Excel. So if you've been working in Excel and you found you need to convert specific values to another unit and you head over to your web browser and you go and convert it there and you manually type in your conversion into your Excel sheet, I'm here to tell you that is no longer needed. With a convert function, you can do everything in Microsoft Excel and it will just speed up your workflow. And if you need to change your initial value, it is possible and your conversion will stay true throughout your formulas that you've used in your Excel sheet. So this is an awesome function to know and here is how it works. So as you can see, we've got a couple of examples that we are going to convert here today and i am going to show you how so from this let's just say if we want to convert fahrenheit the symbol that we're going to use is f and celsius obviously is the the symbol c that we're going to use so it's quite simple you type in the equal sign and you type in convert and from here it will ask, Excel will ask you for the number that you want to convert. So you can manually type in, let's say 85, our value from this side. And you can then do from your units that you want to convert. So in your double quotes, you will be putting in F, closing your double quotes with a comma. You'll go there and you'll see our option an automatic option pops up over here. You can then manually just type in your C and then close your brackets. And from here, you will have your output value. This is your converted value. And if it seems a bit kind of long and weird, you can just head over to this section and click on a number so that it's just two places after the comma. So it's quite simple, but as I said, if you type this number manually, you won't be able to automatically change this value. If I say change this to 70, you'll see it has no impact over here. So what I like to do is when you select your number that you want to convert, I would just select or reference to a cell where I type in my value. And from here, you can see it already started working as i change this value over here my output value has changed as well so this is a great way to convert uh, units to something else and it, it will automatically pull through to your calculations that you've done in your excel sheet so this is a great option you have so let's go ahead and do the miles to kilometers so again equal sign you type in convert and we will be selecting our number from there and our miles we will use mi and then for our kilometers use km so from here you can see we have converted this and let's just type in the symbols for you so that you know exactly what type of symbol you need to use when you convert so just to be clear when you type in convert and you have selected your number and you've delimited that with a comma you can see this automatic pop-up section here and this is a massive index that you can select from I mean, there is a bunch of conversions that you can do. And I mean, if you don't know what you want to convert, you will probably find it here. If you know exactly what symbols you need to use, 
it's easier just to type it out like this and then just press enter and as as i've said before once you change the change these values your conversion changes as well so it it's once you work in an excel spreadsheet and you've got this huge amount of calculations and you have converted this manually from a web browser from google wherever you could have done that and you've typed that in manually then you need to again go and recalculate your value and that then it can only change in your calculations but with this method it's actually actually quite easy to just convert your units in microsoft excel and work from there so when you looking for inches meters there you are your symbols your gallons and your liters and it's pretty much the same i'm not going to type out these uh, formulas but you get what i mean so this is a great function that you can use that can speed up your microsoft excel work and it can actually just simplify your whole life when you can convert in microsoft excel so our next Excel function that we're going to discuss is the H stack function. And please guys, if you have enjoyed this video so far, please remember to like this video down below as this will help the YouTube algorithm get this video out to more people. But to get back to H stack and how it works. So it's very similar to the V stack function that we've used in part one of this series. And if you would like to see the VStack video as well, I'll put the link in the description down below so that you can watch that video as well. Uh, but get back to the H stack formula, it's quite easy and simple. You'll just type in the equal sign and we will type in H stack. And from here, Excel will ask us the arrays that we want to stack. So for instance, I've got these two little tables here and we want to stack these and it's quite simple you'll just select your arrays and then you can just simply hold control and select your second array and once you go and click on your formula as you can see here this is array two this is array one uh, but you can just put in a comma between these to delimit them as well but it's quite as easy as this and if we stack these two arrays you'll see the outcome of this you'll see that our arrays are now stacked to again against each other and the h stack it stands for a horizontal stack so that's why you can see everything is stacked next to each other the v stack works similarly but it stacks vertically as i said you can watch that in another video of on our channel and once we've stacked these two arrays um, the next option that i want to see is again just using the h stack formula and i want to stack individual rows so from here i will be selecting my arrays i'm just going to do a random selection let's just do that again i messed that up uh, you can see I'm just going to do a random selection here. And from here, you'll see I've selected my rows. And once I press enter, you'll see all of our rows stacked horizontally. This is a great option depending on what type of spreadsheet you're working in and what you need to get from this function. You need to know that you can stack on multiple levels. And there's a lot of options that you can use using the H stack function. So we've stacked our rows here and we can even use this function to stack our columns. Let's do a random selection again. I've once again messed that up. So let's just get that back there. You can see I'm just selecting my random columns that we want to stack in this formula and once i press enter you'll see our stack that has happened here so this is a great function to use depending on your spreadsheet 
and what you want to extract or what you want to stack from your spreadsheet. This can be, I mean, you can use this in a bunch of ways. Let's, for instance, say I only want this part of the array and this part of the array, and you can use that to stack them individually as well. This is an awesome function, and I hope that this helps you speed up your Excel workflow. We have gotten to our last Excel function in this video, and it's a great function to use when working in Microsoft Excel. And it is called the drop function. And it works quite simply, and it is a great function, as I said, that you can use in your day to day. So to explain this, we will be typing in the equal sign and you will type in drop. And from here, Excel will ask you which array do you want to use? So I'm just going to select our table at the top here. <clears throat> and from here, it will ask us which rows do we want to drop? So when using a positive sign, let's say for, let's use one, and let's see how this the result looks. As you can see here, when we use a positive one for our rows that we want to drop, it will exclude our first row in our selection that we've made. So when using the drop function, it effectively drops your rows or your columns that you have selected. And you can do this when you're using a positive sign, it will drop from the top of your table or from the left. And when you're using a negative sign, it will drop from the bottom of your table and from the right. So let's do another example to show you exactly how it works. So here we'll just type in our drop function, select our array, and then again for our rows, I'm now going to exclude our bottom row from our table. So I'm going to use a negative one in my selection. So once we we've done that, you'll see exactly how it looks. We've dropped our job titles here at the bottom and we've we've got this new table set up here. So to explain this, there is you can drop your rows and you can drop your columns as I said and from here we've done the rows now let's do a comma and we'll drop a column so a positive number as i've said drops from the top row or the left hand side and a negative will drop from our bottom or the right hand side so let's do our first column that we want to exclude from this so it's going to be a positive one and then we are left with our new selection as you can see over here so this is a great function that you can use if we for instance let's say that's one and we will drop from the right hand side for so we're going to drop our right hand column in our selection here so this will then result into we have now dropped as you can see from the formula we have dropped our first row our names and we have dropped our last column over on this side so this is an awesome function that you can use and you can even exclude your rows you can just do a zero and then you'll see if you put in a zero into your formula in your row section then you won't be able to you won't drop any rows from your original table but then we have used the minus one to drop on the right hand side so there's a bunch of options that you can do with a drop function and it works brilliantly when working in Excel and extracting data from a large table. So this is an awesome function and I hope you enjoyed all of these functions today. If you did, please remember to like this video. And thank you for watching guys. Uh, as always, remember to like the video, subscribe to our channel to see more content like this. And thank you for all of your support. Until next time, cheers.